Good news equals bad news. It's probably the best way to define the trend that currently exists in the stock market. See, we have economic data, and it looks like it's improving. The Fed is stepping back from rate cuts as a result. However, the stock market would prefer lower interest rates. So we're running into a situation where good economic data is weighing down on stocks. Here's an example. Manufacturing, it's looking up. It's been down for a long time. In particular, the Empire State Manufacturing Index was released last week. Now, we had a string of several months in negative territory for the New York uh, Manufacturing Index. But recently, we hit levels of 31.2. This is the highest high we've seen in over a year, a really good development. Now, within the Empire Manufacturing Index, there's actually a very positive, surprising trend, specifically with shipments and new orders, which are two very commonly used barometers to measure the strength of the manufacturing sector in particular. Notice here in in blue, Empire State new orders, in red, shipments. Both have improved quite a bit. It really is the strong part of this last manufacturing report. Retail sales are stable as well. We just had these numbers last week. On a year-over-year basis, retail sales at 2.6%. Now, it's not improving, but it is staying pretty steady for quite a long time, uh, since really the beginning of the year. But within retail sales, we have several sectors. What's an interesting trend is that non-store retailers, that's online shopping, that continues to perform the best. It's not the first time we've spoken about this. At the same time, gasoline sales, gasoline station sales to be particular, are really that weak. They're up and down 7% respectively on a year-over-year basis. If you recall last week, we spoke about the inflation numbers, excluding uh, food and fuel, specifically fuel, uh, inflation is on the rise. That reflects in non-store retailers. But gasoline sales are down. Now, in blue... These are non-star store retailers in red gasoline station sales. And notice the contrast. It's literally up or down 7% on a year-over-year basis. Uh, the divergence could not be more stark. Now, the Fed, as a result, is stepping back from rate cuts. This is in conjunction to what we spoke last week. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that you know, rate cuts are on the table only if deemed necessary. And at the moment, they don't look like they're necessary. Here are the decision probabilities uh, for the uh, for the Fed Fund's futures. Uh, and this is what they tell us. In December and January, we have a 58 and 92% chance, respectively, that the Federal Reserve will cut rates by a quarter point. They're not expected through January to cut more than a quarter point. We look at the March meeting, we have a 52% chance that they'll cut another quarter, meaning half a point down from where we are now, 83% chance in May that we'll be down half a point. This is uh, a lot different than what we spoke about just a few months ago, where the Federal Reserve is expected to cut a full point by this point. Now, in blue, this is the December meeting. Uh, The probability that the Federal Reserve will cut rates by a quarter, that's in blue. In red, probability the Federal Reserve will not cut rates. And we can see there's a growing probability, still less than 50%, but a growing probability the Federal Reserve will not cut rates in the December meeting, now at 42%. There's a 58% chance they will cut rates, but that's down from last week's 83%. So we see the trend. While there still is a greater than a 50% chance the Fed will cut rates in December, that probability is waning as a result in large part of the economic data we're talking about. Now, the Treasury market forecasts long-term growth as well. Notice, in particular, these are the different maturities on uh, the federal, uh, the U.S. Treasury markets. In particular, we can see the lowest yields are offered to three-year maturity at 425 Going out to 10 years on the maturity scale, we see a 442. What does this tell us? When the longer matu- longer term maturities pay a higher yield in the shorter term, it shows us that the longer term outlook is more optimistic. So despite the probability that the Fed may cut rates, you know, maybe not so aggressively, the expectation is the economy over the long term will improve. 
Now, we, why do we say all this? Because we have a big economic calendar this week. In particular, the Philly Fed, which moves very closely, by the way, historically with the Empire Manufacturing Index. Remember, that was very strong. That is uh, scheduled to be reported this Thursday. So keep an eye out for that. As much as the Empire State Manufacturing Index was strong, if the Philly Fed is as well, we'll have to watch the Fed funds futures in the Treasury market to see for any kind of reaction. But any kind of reaction, again, that indicates a Fed may further step away from rate cuts, that could weigh on stocks as it has been doing lately. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.